one in the morning. Made it to Indy. I guess officially on Wednesday, I guess it's officially game day. All clearings go, all systems go. So now finally back here in person, which obviously excited about. So we're going up to the perks. This is where Autumn and I get to hang out. We get to sit, do our thing. Uh, we also have the absolute best view of the entire studio. That's how we start off our days, get our makeup done, start the prep and talking to the guys, the players, get the day going. My hair doesn't. Curls are popping. A little poofy on the top, that's OK. It's just our time to shine. It's about that time. Well, please tell me this is mine or India's. See, I leave things everywhere. I leave things everywhere. I'm excited to just get back into the same flow and, um, you know, get back to doing what I do best, which I think is what I do best is commentating. I hope so. That's why, that's why I'm here. What's up, friends? Hey. What up, buddy? Oh, there they are. So I think we have a, we have a phenomenal team. I, 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 the team that we have is like, I think it's one of the best that out there like in esports. Our team's unique in many different ways because we have some people who just started getting into broadcasting and they feel like they've been, seems like they've been doing it for, you know, years. So you guys know energy wise, but you know what I want. What do you want to talk about tonight is more the, the bigger thing. What are the storylines? So many storylines. I think, I think you and I talked about this a little last night, but like we need to really dig into the overall standings. It's always a workout. Yeah. Stairs. I like to get up here a little bit before rehearsal to get kind of comfortable um, and have my bearings, pull up my rundown, pull up my notes and get everything settled. Harris, India, Scott, Dirk, that's family. And I do not say that lightly. Like ever since I came in, they've been so helpful. Like I didn't know anything about the NBA 2K League. I didn't know how to report on a video game. I used to play basketball growing up, so just trying to find a way to stay in the sport. So I would just do anything around the city of Atlanta. I would cover the WNBA, I would cover the NBA, I would cover high school games, college games, whatever the case might be. Being a sideline reporter and now growing into a host, I didn't realize how much face time and how much of a voice I could be in this role. Let's go! From the let's go to like the so long and good night 2K fam, like I am driving the energy of the show. Autumn is the bridge that makes sure everything's connected, right? She's the glue that kind of keeps us together. I have to be the point guard through it all. And that starts for me, what's important is to be informative on, you know, the storylines I need to bring, the narratives I need to push for our guys and just assist them so they can dunk it. What's How up? are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. You busy? Yeah, I'm good. All right. I'm just gonna ask you a few questions to get some folks to the game. Yeah. So he's like, he said on the cast, but I was like, I'm not about to. Okay. So he's like, I, I played him twice. Okay. We lost the first game. We don't have anybody on this broadcast team who just like they seem forced to be here. They're actively engaged. Everybody wants to be involved and everybody wants to learn. And that's my favorite because I'm, I'm always open from year one. So I've been this analytical guy for this. I'm always open to helping whoever wants to be helped. It's my great privilege to bring to you the commissioner of the National Basketball Association, Adam Silver, to announce the first pick of the NBA 2K League draft. Been here since, I like to consider it day zero, if you will, from the very first draft night all the way up until this point. I still joke around with Brendan Donahue to this day. I used to message him on Twitter every single day like for months. It was probably so annoying and surprising to unfollow me until finally I got a response back like, this is the person you need to hit up, send him a demo reel. I was like, I don't have a demo reel. So I had to throw something together, trying my own editing style and all that. I always dreamed of like working the NBA in some sort of capacity. And so like this was this was that way into doing it and it was a unique uh, way to go. He's just gonna keep on fire. I mean, if he's not there, Pete probably- The first layup is gonna end up dropping for him. Actually, coming up this December will be my 10th year commentating video games, which is kind of cool. 
they still every matchup you see every team has been in the game up until like the very end either they pull away or they'll squeak by that's why i don't think and they don't blow teams out they don't score enough to blow teams you out. know dirt came in with a big esports background and i came in with a traditional basketball background as we've been able to meld those into something that kind of sounds a little bit unique to us they put him in a mental pretzel here you got two passes at max is it dre got it dj makes them pay their offense like last year is just insane what i like about you know commentating like a basketball game of course what we do in the nba 2k league it's literally unscripted you never know what the final score is going to be you never know who's going to have a big game you call the full game hoping for a great final 10 seconds and, and that's what I live for. Be rich for the win! And it's Wizards will face the T-Wolves tomorrow in a stutter! I was one of the first people to be involved in esports. Kept doing broadcasting even before this kind of internet craze that opened up all these opportunities. But I'm super old for esports, but super young for sports. So it's a fun, like, crossroad bridge time for me to, to hopefully be able to pass the baton down. People look at me and they're like, oh, he's the stats guy. It's, it's not even just like the stats side of it that I love. Basketball to me is the most dramatic sport. It's true theater. So when you kind of combine it with like the intensity and drama that competitive gaming brings, get all this so it, it's just a good combination uh, i've been going to sports broadcasting camp since i was 10 years old being on air is really what i wanted to do i wanted to give give the people the information from a preparation standpoint the analytics have taught me that there's always more that i can do so i over prepare you should always over prepare as a broadcaster and obviously this humongous stat sheet is really, really helpful at doing that. I call him the nerd of the 2K League, and that's because he loves this stuff. He truly loves to nerd out and find these little gems that the audience, our fans, and even us on talent may not have known. How many teams have made the playoffs with a negative point differential? Ah, uh, famously. There is one famous one back in season one, Pistons GT with a, I think it was like negative 20 point differential. Made the playoffs, could have won out a few the times that season. Yeah. They got destroyed. I do love that you just knew that off the top well, of your head. Like, so, I was, so, you know, so, so I know that, I know that, no, because. T minus, oh, we got an hour until we get rocking and rolling. So, hour left. Let's get it. Boy, I'm out of breath. I said that coming up here too. The stairs. <laughs> Did they add stairs? I feel yeah. like it. Damn. <laughs> See, India is really funny because India has no broadcast experience coming into this. I've been into being a class clown, and here is where it paid off. This is a true place where I can just be me which is why this is so cool to do. So for me as a sideline reporter, I'm, they're both games going at the same time. I'm going left and right, I'm pacing. I get like 20,000 steps, it's great. And what I'm doing is I'm taking notes of, hey, I just saw this happen. This player just said X, Y, Z. If this player wins, here's what's gonna, I'm gonna ask him. So whenever I do a hit, the one question I ask myself is, is what I'm saying something the viewer would not have known if I didn't report it? Let me tell you, I'm, I'm a big time BSer. You can't, you can't BS the BSer, all right? That's my thing, but man, he's, he's great at it. And it's crazy to come across somebody that has like so much inherent talent at it because his potential as a broadcaster is infinite. Do you the jumping jacks together? Please shake it out. Please shake it out. Don't get that on camera. <laughs>
finally seeing somebody win, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 was, it was good to see one of us win. Uh, I think they were just proud of me. I think it was one of those things, like when I was first getting, getting into this stuff, you know, they didn't think like this 2K League stuff was real at first. They were excited, but it was like more of a sense of relief, you know, they were just happy for me. You know, they were excited, just, you know, like just to see everything kind of come full circle and finally see me on the broadcast. It's uh, something, something cool to share with your family. They just couldn't believe that, you know, I made it from where I grew up, like, through a video game. Just all that type of excitement, or like friends loading up on 2K, seeing me on 2K TV, like add me on Instagram, or my nephews calling me, trying to show me off to their friends, like, bro, Don's is my uncle, just stuff like that. It was pretty dope. You know, friends, family back home, things like that, players in the league. It was it was definitely um, crazy. You know, mama called me right after the game, you know, screaming in the phone. <laughs> my family group chat was blowing up. We're from the country, man. It's super, it's super small. It's not a lot of people. So if they see you on the screen, automatically you made it. You're big time, you're a superstar, you're on TV. 